Welcome back to Fire Emblem Echoes! Last time, we defeated the Pirate King! And now, let's go to the shrine with a big dragon on it. Beast Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody wanted to go on a Beast Hunt, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, Priestess! <laughs> did you forget our little chat about staying clear of the Seabound Shrine? I did. Because this is not staying clear! This is the exact opposite of staying clear! I'm sorry, did we discuss that? <laughs> I must have been preoccupied. I was not caring about what you had to say at all. Surely you would I can't hear you over the sound of all the dragons I'm going to kill. Now. You're scared of necro-dragons, aren't you, Kamui? How careless of me. It completely slipped my mind. Slipped your mind? That's it. I'm waiting on the boat. <laughs> Kamui's leaving. <laughs> See you later. Nope. Not getting out of your chair. <laughs> All right, so quite the intro to this fight. Now we've got our units, and we've got just this necro dragon over here. No other supporting characters, but dang, look at that s those stats and look at that face. Necro dragon is very strong, but it does have the blessed ring, so good reward for defeating it. Uh, now while Kamo is definitely terrified of it, uh, it's not quite as lethal as you might think. And you can do this battle without Seraphim. You probably don't want to, though. Goodness, what a horrifying creature. But I have the Seraphim spell in my quiver now. May its light guide your lost soul on to slumber eternal. I am going to murder you with the power of God. So yeah, Seraphim is effective against terrors. And what do you know? There's this big old terror right here. That being said, Valbar's good protection, but you know what's better protection? What if I just had many ghosts? This is the other strategy. Send ghosts. The dragon will usually go for them first, unless somebody else looks tasty enough to bring it over. So don't let it come to that. Uh, Jenny's in a good spot now. Let's maybe not have her go forward. She'd die. Ready anytime. Myself. Well, Leon, probably not. I'll this. So, have you seen the um, hard mode version of this map? Uh, I have not, actually. Uh, so, the way they make this more difficult is they add a second Necro Dragon. <laughs> I mean, I can't say I'm surprised, but yeah, that would be a bit more difficult because one of the reasons this is, you know easily doable is you have the Seraphim spell, but also you can just divert everybody's attention to a single Necro Dragon. Yeah, I ended up using like most of my uh, Mila's turn wheel uses because I was not prepared for two dragons. Mm-hmm. Come on, you told me there would only be one dragon. God. I, I said nothing of the sort. I just said leave. Why didn't you do that? Uh, it's two of them, but the terrifying version. Also, yeah, Necro Dragon is faster than the ghosts, but that's not a huge deal. Still takes three hits to actually beat him, and oddly enough, that guy managed to evade pretty well. This one... <laughs> Maybe not so lucky against the the great stomping power of the Necro Dragon. Uh, it looks a little bit goofy, but also, to be fair, if an undead dragon came at me like this, I would probably be terrified. Like that's a, that's a lot of dead flesh coming down on me. Thankfully, though, it doesn't have any sort of breath weapon, uh, so it can't counterattack Jenny here as she crits for a little more HP than she would have gotten before. Still not really uh, liking her odds of survival if that thing gets out, so let's just kill it until it dies. Now, naturally, Celica's gonna probably be the finishing blow here, so let's at least let everybody try to get some good hits in. Oh, well, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Thanks, Way to Bowie. go, Bowie. Yeah. 
Ah, well. <laughs> it's just a bad day for lightning. <gasps> the the dragon knew that lightning uh, never strikes twice in the same place. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to go back to my original position then. So this is at least a little more workable. Seraphim's not like an instant win button, but this dragon's been blocked in, so we're good to go. Well, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Chuck another win for the Necro Dragon. So when the Necro Dragon kills a ghost, what happens to it? Does it go to super hell? I mean, I guess so. Jenny has brought these ghosts uh, to life just to make them suffer more. <laughs> Alright, Kami, we have to get over your fear. Or not. <laughs> that was just to have Kami be in character, right? <laughs> I'm gonna get- oh no I'm not! I mean I think I was going to attack him with Kamui but then I was like oh I'm gonna soften him up with Leon first and then Leon was like I'm going to show up this motherfucker. <laughs> oh what's that? Kamui's trying to do something? Better Did stop him! Watch this you dumbass yes. bitch. Alright so Blessed Ring that's an auto heal for every turn so that's nice. Definitely gonna give that to a mage since they're always using HP. Honestly, I was pretty much perfect back then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leon. My god. Leon's never gonna shut the fuck up about that time he shot a dragon to death. <laughs> I was going to get it, Leon. Yes, but you didn't. Alright, so we're not going to end it there, of course, because that would be very short. We only killed one enemy so far, so let's get on to Celica's first actual dungeon. Technically, she could move around the monastery like it was a dungeon, but, you know, there was no danger there. There was no purpose to that. Well, actually, they had the, uh, the water, didn't they? Yeah, the fountains. They had the mineral water that boosted your stats. All right, so we can bring everyone, but I'm just going to reorder people. I I think I assumed that like whoever was in second would probably be like close to the front, which Valbar needs to be being slow and all. Meanwhile, Jenny and May are pretty high level, so like they can attack from a distance anyway, but they don't need the XP. the cave bears the scent of the ocean. There's no sign of anyone coming through here. Scared off by the Necro Dragon, I imagine. Alright, so one neat little detail that I really like is that Celica doesn't have a lantern with her. Uh, she just makes a fire spell and has it follow her around, and that's what provides light for her in the dungeons. It's a nice little bit of flavor. So Seabound Shrine is... Kind of just more of the same, uh, it's not going to be for the entire thing, and in fact, uh, this is probably tougher than the other dungeons that Ulm had to go through so far, but our intro isn't too different, and also Jesus Falbar. Uh, so yeah, for the time being, it's just, you know, it's terrors, and also terrors in a formation that honestly kind of just wound up being very samey when I fought them. Like... Every fight more or less goes like this. Yeah, yeah. That is the problem with, um, procedurally generated Fire Emblem content. Mm hmm. Quote unquote procedurally generated. <laughs> it, it's kind of all set. Yeah, you're right. They just made a bunch of, like, maps they cycle through, but. I meant more of, like,. Whenever you're going to encounter a map multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> Miller has seen us 
a map and an enemy formation. At most, like, the, the big differences in fights here is if another enemy joins in. Now, that being said, uh, thanks to the Seraphim spell, I think, they do allow us to fight some tougher enemies early on uh, in the dungeon as well. And also, you are going to want to start cutting down uh, some coral and whatnot here. Uh, the coins are useful, of course, uh, for later, but we want another type of item. Oh, there it is right there, but first, gotta fight this guy. We also just have to show just a reckless disregard for the environment. Do you have any idea how long it takes coral to grow? Oh, so long, and <laughs> Zelka's just destroying it all. Uh, so, uh, back there, uh, a coral fragment dropped from the coral as we just brutalized it. Uh, just as a hint, you're going to want five of those, uh, for soon-ish. Uh, by the end of the chapter, you'll want them. Uh, it's not a permanently missable thing, but also it'll be just a little while to get it, to, to get the thing, uh, if you don't get the coral now. You will be set back slightly. And come we redeems himself from the Necro Dragon incident. Actually gets to stab this one. <gasps> Wait, it's just in the back. God damn it, I didn't shoot that one too. <laughs> As... Right after Kabui stabs it, like an arrow goes flying through and lands in the in the skeleton's corpse, I guess. And Leo's just like, finish it off for you. No, you fucking didn't. How do you know that thing couldn't have kept fighting? It's an animated skeleton. Its ribcage could have kept going. Uh, you know, we've, we've just reinvented Gimli and Legolas. You realize this, right? I mean, isn't that all dynamics eventually? At least a good percentage of them. Uh, so, uh, a few things to talk about this time around. We're not going to be encountering it uh, in this episode, but last time we were in a dungeon, there was a big glowy monster that in a di another dimension did kill Alm. Uh, so rare enemies uh, won't appear the first time you enter a dungeon. Also, I completely forgot about the Deliverance hideout <laughs> two dungeons ago. Uh, but yeah, uh, by default, apparently, there is a 10% chance of the enemies entering after you, uh, clear the dungeon the first time. I wish they all went this However, way. there's also a way to automatically get rare enemies to spawn, and that is a method that I can't use at all, because it involves Street Pass. Uh, basically, Street Pass can do a whole lot of stuff. One of these things is just... You hear gossip about a powerful enemy, so one will just appear in a selected dungeon. Well, all you gotta do is travel back to, like, six years ago, when people were still playing 3DS games. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I don't think we can find rare enemies in this section just yet, uh... The chart I looked at on uh, Serenest Forest uh, says that one can be found, but much later on. Anyway, here's a feeble hey, man. Who kills this? Oh, geez, this guy wants food. Well, I'll. All right. Well, let's give him some food. Geez, that, this poor guy must have been trapped here for ages. Have some bread, my friends. <laughs> Excuse me. My friend, there's a literal saying about this. Buddy. <laughs> My dude, you are starving to death. Eat a bread. God, alright, so fine. Have some fucking dried meat, idiot. Have some jerky like this is a fucking commercial for beef jerky. <laughs> are, are there cameras here? Uh, so now that he's no longer feeble, we do realize that he is a skilled angler. This man will be important for later, so it's a good thing we saved him now.
Uh, I guess he also wouldn't have listened to us about the dead necro- or re-dead necro dragon if we hadn't fed him first, so we could have just left and he'd be like, Oh no, I'm going to starve here to death with that necro dragon outside. I wonder how those people got in and out. Oh well, none of my business. I'm dying of hunger. Ooh, a trusty blade. I love a good trusty blade. Alright, well, I'm sure this is a hint that we absolutely required. Um, I'm sure we never would have figured out this puzzle without skilled angler. Is that your birth name or is that just your- oh, well, he's gone. Anyway, here's some conversations. Hey, skilled hey, angler is the Mega Man X-Boss. Good on you for keeping at it. Me? I can't imagine giving my all for a gig that doesn't pay. No one asked you to solve this mess, let alone page you, yet here you are. Seems like your job is a tougher one than I'm willing to take on. Makes me wonder if the gods are really worth all that trouble. Well, the gods don't pay you, so uh, there's your answer. <laughs> this guy's name is God, and he's just oh, yelling at the trouble? gods, just I'm openly sure blaspheming. Like me. I'm nauseous, I'm sunburned, and I'm windbeaten. I look like death's damp leftovers. But you look fresh as a daisy, priestess. What's your secret? What? Nothing? Nothing? No products what, whatsoever? What the fuck? Dappled angel. Oh, that's so annoying. You mean you don't have well, to try? This is great and all, but don't expect it to last. <laughs> fuck this shit. All right, so uh, we've got some herbs over here. Let's just pick those up. And uh, yep. That's a statue, all right. And, uh, oh look, a memory prism. I'll be taking that glowy. Alright, well, there's nothing else here, but, uh, we did get a memory prism, so let's just take a break in the middle of this dungeon. And, uh, so go to the turn wheel. And, uh, what's that memory prism? Amid the flames, well, that sounds fun. All right, Selka, uh, have fun uh, just looking back to your old memories of almost dying in a fire. Have fun reliving trauma. Uh, I, this is one of those things that's just purely gameplay, so, like, I don't know what's happening here, like, in fiction. Selka just walked into the shrine, saved an angler, picked up a memory somehow, and is now just watching herself as a child in, in that one time her entire family fucking died in a fire except her. Selka picks up a shiny crystal and then just stares in the middle distance for ten minutes while like a single tear rolls down her cheek. <laughs> I'm not done complaining yet, Selika. Honestly, you're, you have to comb at least. I was gonna say, Valbar and company have known her for like 20 whole minutes. What's happening? Damn, you just say. He aims to leave no witnesses alive. I'm afraid things may get a little bumpy. Uh, so it is kind of nice that we get to see sort of the uh, background events. This is like ever so slightly touched upon in the original Gaiden, uh, referenced more here. Uh, and, you know, now we're just outright having a scene of Selika as a child having to actually escape from, uh, the horrible fires that Desai started and fucking, uh, Slade was also in doing murders. Desai ordered Slade, uh, <laughs> Slade executed. I was gonna say, we... We talk shit about Slade, but if uh, somebody ordered me to go into a burning building, I'd probably just say no. <laughs> Rip to him, but I'm different. Alright, and that's what uh, Slade was talking about when he said uh, he wanted to finish things from the uh, flames that night uh, when he was talking to Myson or whatever, whatever he said. I'm paraphrasing, it's been a while. I'm just picturing to say trying to convince Slade to run into this building that's going to be fully engulfed in flames. 
<laughs> so don't worry. We got you this new type of armor. It's completely flame proof and it's just made of asbestos. <laughs> like, like Slade's gonna be dead in six years. <laughs> Either I'm just gonna kill him or he's going to catch some horrible disease. I forget what asbestos gives you. Mm hmm. Nothing good. We can leave it at that. I know it fucks you up. <laughs> Alright, so we got Water of HP and Water of Skill. If you ask me, Skill is far more valuable. Uh, you know, HP, I feel like only getting one from a fountain uh, isn't the biggest deal, because it's usually one of the stats that goes up uh, fairly frequently for any character. Sometimes. Maybe other times you don't get so lucky, but either way, uh, if you're looking at the skill meters, all of them are lower than I'd necessarily like, you know? I'll do one for posterity. But like... I like hitting things is the thing. Like this extremely obvious wall. Thank you, skilled angler, I never would have figured that one out. Alright, now we're at the actually difficult portion of the Seabound Shrine. It's not going to be too hard just yet, though. <laughs> There's harder stuff, but later. Uh, so, since we're in a fairly long dungeon, I figure this is a good point to uh, stop and talk about character designs. Specifically, the main character designs. Because we talk frequently about, you know, the other characters' designs and how they all look better. <laughs> In all instances. And speaking of looking well, here's Leon. How goes it, old friend? Pretty good, Leon. How about you? Oh, you know me. I'm always at 110% when you're around. Wow, what a great friend you are, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good old friendship that spurs something. us to do our best. You're rather handsome devil and more than good in a fight. If you could just keep your mouth shut, I bet the ladies would flock to you. I'd like to see the what fucking, like, roller coaster about? Leon went through during and those two lines. Fighting at your side is enough for me. I require no other distractions. Yeah? Uh, well, thanks. That's actually pretty flattering, I suppose. <laughs> he does that a lot if you would pay attention, Valbar. By the way, Leon, can you tell me what kind of animal the Pink Panther is? <laughs> oh, Valbar, you're so fucking stupid. Uh, so yes, uh, the main character designs, of course, changed over time. Uh, should be obvious, it happens to all the remakes. Uh, I mean, look at old Marth. Uh, he has a very modernized design by this point that's not gonna differ too much between games. Uh, in the past, though, in the first game, he looked like this. Mm hmm. Hi, I'm Marth. Welcome to Fire Emblem. Nowadays, you only see Marth in this costume in very specific fan arts. <laughs> uh, so, it goes without saying that, like, Alma and Celica looked pretty alright in the original game. Uh, the, the, the box art looks not too bad. Again, Valbar notwithstanding. <laughs> but over time, uh, both characters got changed about a decent amount. Uh, I would say they definitely went through fewer changes than Marth did, uh, perhaps, but uh, I think Ulm went through a, a few different iterations uh, in that early on they actually could not keep his design consistent at all. Uh, <laughs> He has green hair on the box art, but in-game he has blue hair. Uh, in the complete art book he has blue hair. It was kind of just, hey look, it's Marth again. A little bit. It's Marth, but he's very heavily armored. His armor, if anything, has gone through like the least changes. It's gotten like a little more detailed, but I think it's more or less just been consistent over time. But I would like to especially mention uh, the Fire Emblem Awakening Alm artwork. Uh, oh, though first, uh, Selkin may have to talk. <sighs> What's wrong, May? I forget. Like Were you the so one who didn't want to fight Necro Dragons? Is there some way I can help? No, wait. That was oh, Saber. No, no, the other mercenary. 
Do you think girls should be all delicate and proper and junk? Well, I suppose I think there's room for every girl to be herself. Wait, you mean it? Oh, but you're super nice, so of course you'd say that. You don't count. I need some real motherfuckers to answer count? me, just some absolute <laughs> bastards with terrible opinions. What's your real problem? If they can be what? right about something, then I'll know I'm fine. Okay, so here's Fucking the thing. Gray just teleports into the room. Just hypothetically, <laughs> let's say there was someone I liked. Someone I'd always been close to, but who never saw me as a woman. I mean, in that case, I'd have to be the problem, right? May, could you I fucking don't... slow down? Oh. Oh! I don't think you need to worry, May. You're a wonderful woman. You're kind and cheerful, and you always encourage your friends to keep going. And honestly, you're if an you, you're gonna make it work out with are. Bowie, well, and just keep going, yourself. because you haven't murdered each yeah, other by is. this point, which I guess be. means, therefore, you're I fine. Mean, God, I just can't stop thinking of that fucking vine of, like... If he's not interested in you by now, you're gone. Now go chop his dick off. <laughs> Thanks, though. Really. All right, now let's burn a skeleton. <laughs> well, I feel a lot better. <laughs> Be yourself, May. All right. <laughs> Fucking immediately murders a skeleton to death. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, the Fire Emblem Awakening DLC. So, um... Considering the fact that Awakening was originally going to be the final game of the series, they put a lot of work into some references and, you know, things that, you know, were part of the main story, but there was a whole lot of, like, DLC and Spot Pass stuff that used uh, older characters from the rest of the series, uh, some of which used uh, new designs or artwork. Uh, Especially, I believe, the ones that got, like, actual dedicated DLC, because uh, there was a fair bit of that, uh, which was a little bit different from the Spot Pass stuff, which was free, you just needed internet. Oh, and here's the actual tough part of the dungeon I was talking about. Gargoyles! Surprise! Oh, fuck! That was bad! <laughs> there are two of the room, and yeah, no, they are more than likely going to attack you at the same time. Uh, so gargoyles, of course, are flying enemies, so they do take more damage from arrows, but also, at this point, they're real motherfuckers. <laughs> they do some damage. Uh, so, yeah, this one's just going to be at normal speed, because, yeah, this is the actual tough fight. This is the fight of Seabound Shrine, so, yeah. <laughs> Fucking go for it. I'm basically just going to attempt to kind of curve around into this corner, kind of defend myself from the top group while trying to whittle down everybody over here. And that's the best I got. Anyway though, yes, uh, a lot of characters got like unique artworks and in a manner too similar to what they do with Fire Emblem Heroes, uh, a lot of the heart artwork was done by guest artists. Uh, so Alm got a DLC artwork by Hakan. Uh, which is H-A-C-C-A-N, and all caps. <laughs> From what I can tell, he does a lot of stuff, including a lot of Fire Emblem uh, Heroes artwork as well. And I mean, I do really like his stuff. Now, am I biased because he did do uh, an Emperor Edelgard uh, design? Maybe. But he did other good designs as well. He designed a Nephany, I like that one too. Uh, but yeah, the cool thing about, uh, Hakan's artwork for Alm is the fact that, like, the armor is actually fairly detailed, and also, he kind of, uh, addressed the Alm hair color problem. Uh, it is predominantly green, because that's kind of how it appears, you know, in the, uh, like, promotional artwork, uh, rather than, like, the in-game stuff, but he also had blue tips, so... Uh, kind of just got them both in there, which is kind of neat. I like that idea. If I remember correctly, he also drew Alm's face, like, really, really young. He does look pretty young, yeah. Feeling like a baby. <laughs> I don't know if I would say baby, but yeah, it is just one of those extremely young, like, mildly androgynous anime designs. Don't talk me, I'm angry. <laughs> uh, I would also say his hairstyles a little bit boring otherwise he it's similar to the old artwork of course but i kind of like what they do with his hair in this game 
It's not that much different, but it gets a little more flair. Enough so that it is interesting. Whereas it's just a little bit off of a bowl cut in the original. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then the other character is Celica. So Celica's original design was actually pretty nice, I will say. Uh, I kind of like the color palette they used. Uh, there was a lot of oranges and yellows, and it looked pretty interesting. Her armor was pretty good as well. And it was actually good enough that, like, uh, another hero's thing, uh, she has a warrior priestess alt, which is basically just a, like, slightly modified version of her original art. Her face is closer to what it is in this game, but yeah, the outfit is uh, close to that. Uh, that being said, I really do like her design in this game though, even if the color palette's, you know, more whites. Her outfit's really nice, and also, her face is just really pretty. It's it's not like she wasn't pretty in Gaiden, but like, jeez. <laughs> I was really hoping Kevin would miss there. <laughs> you keep wanting to, him to not be good. Here's the problem, though. He's kind of kicking ass. <laughs> I forgot how the gargoyle was fought. Oh yeah, no, they use their feet. <laughs> they just fucking swing a goddamn scythe around like that. It's kind of rad, actually. I do really like the gargoyle's designs. Uh, but anyway, yeah, um... Celica, of course, also had a DLC design in Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, which was done by uh, Masasugi Saito, who is mainly known for uh, Xenoblade nowadays. Uh, he has done other stuff, but like, uh, he's like one of the big artists in Xenoblade uh, 2. Uh, and I believe he's actually coming back on for Xenoblade 3. And so like, I think he's a good character designer, but the main issue is like, if you look at the Fire Emblem Awakening Celica, it is basically just prototype Pyra. <laughs> and look, he's allowed to have a type, but like, it is just prototype Pyra. Does he have a same face problem? Um, I don't think so. I think, like, it's a little bit uh, anime face, but I don't think he has it as badly as other people do. It's just, yeah, a little bit of simple face design plus the red hair. It's just extremely Pyra in my eyes. Okay, what? Watch Bowie's uh, victory pose here. I noticed something. Hmm. He's doing Papyrus' pose. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna have to end this video with <laughs> just that and bone choosing. <laughs> Uh, we have good fun here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I may have completely derailed what you were going to say. Uh, not really, like... Yeah, that, that's been one of the reasons I didn't really like his, uh, awakening design. It's not bad, it's just... It, it's just Pyra, except not as good because, you know, Py Pyra is clearly the, the character he wants. One. Okay, that's a little unfair to say, but, but yeah. Pyra's the popular, like, main character design for a video game. Uh, and this is kind of Celica, but also not as good as the one they drew for Echo, so it's just in this weird middle ground where, again, not bad, but, like, doesn't really have the, the nice color palette that the original did, and wasn't just fucking... I don't know, just... You know, it's same position as Pyra, like, Celica's on the box art. Man, my luck is almost Somebody had to put effort into that. I don't know this character's name, but did he also design the Xenoblade character 2 that people use to prove that Xenoblade 2 has oh, bad character designs? Was... Dahlia? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think he was uh, behind that one. Alright. 
I think I eventually became suspicious because like it would be one thing for most of the backlash to be against that design. But I eventually realized all of the backlash was against that design. Yeah. And I kind of thought, figured, like, you know, there's got to be other characters in this game, and if they don't look bad... Yeah, no, they all look fine. Alright, oh, this is a cool fountain. So, we've got a uh, fountain of experience. Uh, we've got a herring. So, we're gonna go over here to... Uh, this side of the room, where undoubtedly there is another fountain. It's a little awkward to get to because of the pedestals, but there are no longer gargoyles in the way, so don't have to worry about them. Alright, so we got a fountain over here, and as soon as I stop getting distracted by shinies... Water of Resistance! Oh, this is such a tough choice to make, though. Like, experience is good, but nobody gets resistance. Even mages in this game rarely get resistance. It's just mages start with resistance. <laughs> Unlike warriors. Yeah, you just say your resistance is what you start with. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I figured, hey, I should get a few levels, right? So, the Fountain of Experience will just give you... 100 experience. You just get an auto level from this. And you get a very smooth level up because we're in the overworld. <laughs> 60 frames per second level up, baby. So yes, Jenny was able to get the physics spell from that level up, which is a long distance heal spell. Of course, it takes more HP to use, but yeah, no, if you don't want Jenny to be at the front line, she can still heal from the back. Way in the back. So the last time I played this game, um, I found the Fountain of Experience, didn't see a second fountain, it just immediately uh, used all three uses. Really surprised. Then I found the other fountain that was better run dry. Did you now? Oh, is that not how it works? <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go over here, cause that one uh, only had two uses. It's fucking still gonna be there. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Yeah, so the, the water of resistance is still there. I didn't remember using the resistance fountain. I remembered the experience fountain. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I was like, clearly I know what's happened here. I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do only have two uses each, which kind of sucks, but also it's a free level up and a point of resistance. Of course, they're not going to give you three of these. Yeah. Alright, so we get the Blessed Sword from this chest. This was the item that was talked about earlier. Give that to Celica. It's also good against terrors and is just very powerful. Since we gave the Golden Dagger to Saber and he's making good use of it, yeah, let's definitely give Celica this. So yeah, it's got recovery, like the Magic Ring, so she'll be healing, and it's got anti-terrors, so now she has the Seraphim spell to, to obliterate terrors, and she can also just stab them, too. Yeah, Celica's going to tear apart terrors. Uh, so yeah, much like Alm, of course, Celica's very good. In that she has good stats and growth rates. But also, dang, she's got some good designated items. Not to say Blessed uh, Sword is locked to her. But, like, who else are you going to give it to, Kamui? Uh, yeah, just like the Leaven Sword, the, or the Lightning Sword. Technically, other characters can use it if they're not Alm. But, like... Give it to Alm, though. Gotta get one of these. I'll do a few off-screen coral pickups, because I didn't get them all here. And again, you should have five. If you need to get more, just enter and exit until you've got all of them you need. Of course, you'll have to fight more enemies, because they will respawn, but, eh. That's just how it goes sometimes. We're skipping that fight, though, because we're done here. All the difficult fights have been done. No more conversations. Uh, no major level ups. Getting out of here, because I don't want to fight you. <laughs> Alright, so, I'm just gonna grab that shiny, because it's safe to do so. And... We're done with Seabound Shrine. 
Alright, that was quite the trek, but we're done here. So, next time on Fire Emblem Echoes, we finish Act 2.